In this video, I'm going to talk about the Kaiser Mayer Olken measure of sampling adequacy, which is a indicator to test whether a correlation matrix is appropriate for factor analysis. And the expectation is that you're going to see some reasonably uh, moderate to strong correlations between the indicators that you're going to factor analyze. But the question ultimately is how big of a correlation is sufficiently large. And there are a number of uh, techniques that have been developed for that purpose. And the one that I'm going to talk about today is the uh, Kaiser Mayer Olken measure of sampling adequacy, which can be tested in most stats programs, including SPSS. Now, there's a I think there's some misunderstanding about the uh, KMO in uh, coefficient. Uh, and that's that I often see people uh, or I see sources write that values uh, greater than 0 0.50 uh, indicate that a correlation matrix uh, should and can be factor analyzed. And I think this is very misleading. And I'll show you the uh, Kaiser Rice paper where people often cite uh, as a reference for using the KMO uh, to determine whether a, fact, a correlation, uh, correlation matrix is appropriate for factor analysis. And so this is the 1974 paper. And if you scroll down to uh, page 112, uh, Kaiser has his guidelines here, and he does have below 0 0.50 as a KMO value is unacceptable. But he also writes that in the 0 0.50s, it's actually a miserable level of common variance in the correlation matrix. So you wouldn't uh, factor analyze a correlation matrix that has a KMO value of 0 0.50. And he says even in the 0.6s is mediocre. And it's only once you get into the 0.70s that it's middling. Uh, and certainly 0.80s is meritorious. And I would recommend, based on these guidelines and my own experience, that uh, a KMO value in the 0.65s is probably minimally acceptable. And you would move up from there. So I think what has thrown people is that uh, Kaiser used the word unacceptable and people have just assumed that anything above 0 0.50 is acceptable, but it isn't acceptable. Uh, 0 0.50 is miserable. And so let me show you with a uh, correlation matrix that I've created uh, that has very, or I've created data that are associated with very small correlations, not appropriate for factor analysis. So let's look at the correlations between these nine variables that I simulated to have very small correlations. Uh, inter-item correlations. And here we've got the uh, correlations that are equal all to 0 0.01. So all these variables are correlated 0 0.01, very small correlations, not worth factor analyzing. And let's see what the KMO uh, value we get when we do a dimen dimension reduction analysis in SPSS, and I'll go into descriptives and click on KMO and Bartlett's test of sphericity. And we can see that the KMO actually comes out above 0 0.50. It's, exact, it's equal to 0.534. And that indicates that, yes, there is some common variance in the correlation matrix, but certainly nothing appropriate uh, to analyze uh, in a factor analysis. So it's a little bit above 0.50. That does not make it acceptable. It's actually in the miserable uh, level. And so even if I got into the 0.60, I'm still very mediocre. And so that's why I recommend uh, 0.65 is probably a pretty good demarcation criterion to determine whether your factor, whether your data are factor analyzable. And I'll just point out one more thing here, or two more things. One is, if you do a factor analysis on that data that have very poor small correlations, all 0.01s, you actually do get uh, a component matrix that has factor loadings equals to 0 0.350, which is a little bit misleading, I think. Somebody might look at that and go, well, I got a, f a single factor, and it all has loadings above 0 0.30, so that uh, suggests that something uh, is in my data that is a factor. But my hunch very strong hunch is that none of these factor loadings would be statistically significant. Unfortunately, we don't get those in SPSS. Uh, my hunch is the standard errors associated with those might actually be very poor. I'm not sure. At the very, I guess another way to think about this is the uh, scree plot. Uh, so let me do the dimension reduction again and extract 
the scree plot, which will look like we have a factor to extract when you first look at it. Uh, it looks like there's this big break in the scree, but when you look at the y-axis, look how minimal a range there is, 0.98 all the way to 1.08. So if I adjust this scale to something that's more appropriate, uh, something like, I mean, technically it should be 1 to 9 because that's the maximum number an eigenvalue can take uh, when you have nine variables. So when I actually go 1 to 9, you can see that there's really just this very minor bump, which if I did a parallel analysis wouldn't be found to be statistically significant. Uh, so I probably, you know, it's really quite misleading. And so I think that's why we should pay some attention to KMO values, even in this day and age, it's, you know, it's an old statistic, but it does give you a sense of uh, how far you are from the null hypothesis, which is 0 0.500. I suppose that's another confusion in the literature is that you might think that a KMO value ranges from 0 0.0 to 1.0. It doesn't. Well, I mean, it does if you have negative correlations in the correlation matrix. So let me show you one last thing, which is a set of data that have zero correlations between them. So this, I'll just prove it quickly, statistics correlations. And we can see that the correlation matrix that I just produced there from those variables, all zero correlations. And what would I get if I did a uh, dimension reduction analysis and just look for the uh, KMO value? Well, I'll get exactly 0 0.50. And here it is right here. So when you have an identity matrix, which is all zeros, uh, SPSS gives you 0 0.50 as the lowest value possible. Um, now, technically, you can get lower than 0 0.50 if you have negative correlations in the correlation matrix or a mixture of negative and positive. Uh, so as a general statement, go forward thinking 0 0.50 is the null hypothesis. We want to get something closer to 0.65 and do not trust sources that suggest that anything above 0.50 is suggestive of an appropriate factor analysis because it's not.